Hello everyone! In this lecture, we will define reliability and how to calculate reliability of a test. Well, a test is said to be reliable if it is consistent within itself and across time. What does it mean? It means that the results of the test should be similar if it is taken several times on different occasions. Now, let's look at two examples. We'll compare two tables, table 1 and 2. In table 1, we have 10 students and the score obtained on the first day and the score obtained on the following day. So, students took the same test twice and they had, they obtained different results. Let's compare this table, day 1 and day 2. And let's compare another table, table 2. Again, same students, but a different test, which was conducted twice on two different days. And what do you think? Which test is more reliable? Test B, which is shown here in the example, or test A? You can pause the video, go backwards and forward, and decide which test is more reliable. All right, now the answer is test B. Those who answered that test B is more reliable are correct. Why? Because the difference between day one and day two is not big. Well, let's have a look here. Bill, there is only four point difference. Mary, again, four point difference. The maximum difference here is only five points. While in test A, the difference is huge. 18 points, sometimes even 20, which means that test A is not reliable. Every test has a reliability coefficient, and we can calculate how reliable a test is. The ideal reliability coefficient is 1. 1 here means 100%. Well, it's impossible to achieve 1, but because anyways, there will be a difference between day 1 and day 2. However, we can obtain quite high reliability coefficient anyways, if we have detailed rubrics and several scores if it is a productive test. Now, let's have a look at the reliability coefficients described by Lado. Lado states that a good speaking test should have a reliability coefficient no less than 0.70. A listening test, 0.80. Vocabulary, grammar and reading, 0.90. Now, I have a question. Why does a speaking test have the lowest reliability coefficient in comparison with listening, vocabulary, grammar, and reading tests? You can pause the video and brainstorm. I'm pretty sure that most of you guessed the answer correctly. Speaking is a productive skill, and if it is productive skill, it requires judgment of a scorer, and when judgment is involved, it is subjective. So, speaking test has the lowest reliability coefficient because of subjectivity in assessment, while vocabulary, grammar, and reading has, have uh, very little subjectivity. They are mostly multiple choice, paraphrase, fill in the gaps questions. This is why subjectivity is minimal. How can we calculate the reliability coefficient? Well, there are two methods, test retest and split half. In test retest methods, we give the same test twice on two different days and compare the results. In split half, we divide the test into two parts. So, 
it might be the first 50 questions and the next 50 questions. But it might not be very practical for several reasons. For example, a test, the first half of the test might focus on grammar and vocabulary, and the second part might focus on reading and listening. And it would be very unfair to compare different skills and subskills. This is why we use a different technique in split half. We divide the same test into odd and even numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. So these are odd questions. And even numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So we divide the test into two parts. Odd and even. This is very practical. Which method do you think is used more often? Test retest or split half? All right. If your answer was split half, you are correct. Because test retest is not practical for many reasons. Well, the first reason is that in many cases, the tests that we conduct are high-stake exams and we cannot validate them on a similar population. We just don't have them at, at our disposal. Another reason is that students can revise. No matter what, no matter how much we can tell them, don't revise, please. There will be students who will revise it anyway. This is why split half method is more popular. It saves time, it saves effort, and it ensures security. For this reason, split half is more popular among educators. Now, let's continue with calculation of reliability coefficient. So, let's imagine that we use split half technique. We have 10 students. We divide the test into two parts, for example, odd numbers and even numbers. And here we have the results. Scores on the first part and scores on the second part. What should we do? We can get a scientific calculator. And we should engage statistical functions first and enter all those numbers, 55, 59, and so on. Here we have numbers like student A, 55, first score, first part, 59, the second part. Next, student B, 48, 52, 23, 21. So we should enter all those numbers and press a button R, which stands for correlation coefficient. Well, there is another way of doing it. Nowadays, you don't have to have a calculator because we have the internet. You can Google and find online calculators. There are lots of very nice online calculators which can do it for you. However, of course, you have to enter those numbers anyways, like 59, 55, 55, 59, 48, 52, and so on. After that, when you get a number, it is usually, it should be point something, point 85, point 0.75 or whatever. So it shouldn't be one, two, or three. It should start with zero, zero point 0.70 or whatever the number is. Next, we use a simple formula by Spearman Brown to calculate the reliability coefficient of the whole test. Because in the beginning, we only obtained reliability coefficient of two halves separately. All right. So here it is. This is the formula. Two times coefficient for split halves. Remember, it was point, zero point something. In our case, it's 0 
divide it by 1 plus, again, 0 0.95. And we obtain the number 0 0.97, which is very high reliability. As I've mentioned before, we cannot achieve number 1 for reliability coefficient. This is uh, statistically impossible. But still, we can obtain a very high reliability coefficient, as in, in this example. Well, these are the aspects that you should pay attention to concerning scorer reliability. A scorer is the person who evaluates, who assesses students. Multiple choice test score reliability coefficients would be close to 1. Because in multiple choice test, there is, as we mentioned earlier in our earlier lectures, um, there is no judgment. These are not multiple, these are not open-ended questions. There is only one correct answer. Uh, there is no way for discussion or subjectivity. This is why multiple choice tests are used quite often in high stake exams. And nevertheless, it doesn't mean that we should use only multiple choice tests. We should use combination. For example, half of the questions might be multiple choice tests, questions, 25% might be open-ended, 25% might be filling the gaps, or paraphrase, so we should use combination of different techniques. You should never rely on one technique only. The test carried out by a computer is said to be objective. This is very straightforward, because Computers, they don't have feelings, they're machines, they are very objective. You, I, you either pass or fail, for example, and they will never give you extra points. Yeah, some students might not like being evaluated by computers, yeah, because uh, they don't give any bonus points. Subjective tests will not have reliability coefficient of 1, yeah, because there is subjectivity. And especially if scorers are not professionals, if they do not know how to evaluate, well, the reliability coefficient might suffer a lot. However, it is still possible to obtain scorer reliability coefficient of over 0 0.90 for the scoring of compositions if we use detailed rubrics and if we use trained scorers. And there should be several scores, at least two. If you have three, it's even better. IELTS and TOEFL, they, as far as I know, in these tests, there are several scores, and they evaluate candidates independently from each other. So they do not see um, the results of their colleagues, how they evaluated a certain candidate. This is why. Um, the reliability of their assessment is very high. And last but not least, if the scoring of the test is not reliable, the test results cannot be reliable either. What does it mean? It means that if the scorer, the evaluator, the teacher is not reliable, well, well then the results cannot be reliable. Well, it might be for two reasons. The scorer might not be a professional in his field. He might inflate grades or vice versa. He, he might diminish grades severely. Or the scorer might be uh, a dishonest person. He might be uh, a person who just take bribes and gives higher scores to certain students, yeah? uh, which sometimes happens in Olympiads yeah, in Kazakhstan. So we should pay attention to scorer reliability a lot. We should hire reliable scores. It doesn't matter how good the test is. If the scorer is not reliable, then the results cannot be reliable, no matter how good the test is. Thank you for your attention and see you at my next lecture.